About a week ago, JK asked if I could share one of my first commander decks, and I responded saying I'd save this for the 600 sub special. So here we are. We've passed 600 subscribers, and I have to thank you all for helping me with this. It's a cliche to say I wouldn't be here without you guys, but I really do look forward to seeing your comments and reactions to my videos. Now make sure you watch to the end of this video because I have something planned as possibly more of a thank you. So the question was about one of my first commander decks, but I really haven't kept track of any of them too much, so allow me to transform this into more of a discussion of how I've gotten into Magic and Commander. So if we go back to my high school days, I was part of a club called the Sci-Fi Fantasy Club, or what it was more well known as around the school was just sci-fi. I found it kind of funny because it was known as sci-fi, but I can only remember playing one thing that was sci-fi related in that club. We mostly played Palladium, which was basically the poor man's D&D. You might better know it from the other games they put out. It was fun, and it was my first introduction to really hardcore, dirty fantasy things, but we were also doing this Monday, Wednesday, Friday in our 50-minute lunch block, which by the time everyone got there and got ready, and since people had to leave early to get to their next class, it ended up being close to like half an hour of Palladium. Now, if you've ever played D&D, you know the bigger the group, the longer it takes to do something. So we had the whole club playing, so it was like eight or more people every day, and we could only get through half an hour. So it's just chaotic and nothing got done. In my grade 11 year, the teacher who was running sci-fi decided to step down because he was heavily involved with a bunch of other groups. And a new teacher showed interest in the club, so he handed it off to her. She taught the club how to play magic, which is a great alternative to just 30 minutes of madness. And with the help of an LGS, they supplied the club with sample decks. I'm going to come out and say it. It was Worlds Away in London, Ontario who supplied the decks. It's a great LGS. I've never been to an LGS with as big of a selection or as great of a selection of cards as rolled away. It's a great card shop and I wish I lived in London and I wish we weren't in a pandemic because I'd be there every day. I'm not being sponsored by them, but if you're nearby, I highly suggest checking them out. So they supplied us with some sample decks for M14. If you don't know what the sample decks were, they were 30 card decks, each one was monocolored, and the point was to take two and throw them together. I still remember the color combo I grabbed was white green, which is kind of funny because white green has to be my least favorite color combination now. This was like a week or two after Theros came out, so it's a little weird for me to say I started playing on a certain set because I started playing with an M14 product, which included Return to Ravnica block cards shortly after Theros, and then the first cards I threw into the deck were probably from Theros boosters. So if you fast forward a bit, me and my close group of friends who later became my playgroup were invested in magic. We played it during most lunches and tried to keep up with standard and tried to do F&Ms at Worlds Away every now and then, but then rotation hit, and like it is for most magic players, that was kind of a disheartening time for us. We told that half your deck is just not allowed anymore. We played a little more standard after that, but we would essentially just make kitchen table shank decks that were never standard legal. Eventually one of us heard of Commander. I don't remember if it was Shaggy or me, but I remember one of the times we got together, we both busted out a really janky Commander deck made out of collections. If you never made a deck with just random stuff you have lying around, it's a lot of fun. I made Crufix and he made Iowaz. It was just the two of us playing and he beat me pretty consistently with that, to which I made the conclusion that green blue is bad in Commander and red white is good. I don't think I've ever been more wrong on something in my life. Shortly after that, my playgroup started playing Commander, and then more and more people in Sci-Fi started playing Commander. And then Sci-Fi eventually just became 10-ish people all playing Commander at lunch every day. It was a lot of fun. We were back at the time constraints of Palladium, but most of the time you could pretty much pick a winner from the table based on life totals and board presence. Shortly into the group starting to play Commander, I got a part-time job, and since I was a high schooler with a bunch of disposable income, I decided to spend money on magic cards like the fiscally responsible teenage boy that I was. So I turned to online dealers and built Doran, or Doran the Explorer as I would call it. It was a fun deck, but it was also a good lesson in deck building. I was so used to playing 1v1 that thinking I could have like two or three zero fours out by the time I got Doran on the field was great, but a big problem with that was I'd get to like turn four or five and be in top duck mode. So that taught me the importance of card draw in Commander. It also taught me the importance of not becoming a threat in Commander, because if you have an impressive board before everyone else, they're gonna team up and kill you. Sometime later, I got kind of bored of Doran because I could never really win with it, and I saw the professor from Tolerian Community College posted something on his social with the preface of if there was one legendary creature that he'd want to give one more color to, it'd be Reki the History of Kamigawa. I don't know why, but I took that as a challenge and made a deck that was pretty much just as many legends as I could throw in together. I've stayed with that deck ever since, and I've been trying to fix it and add pieces as a new set comes out. If you've watched enough of my videos, you've probably heard me mention it before. I even have a deck tech up for it on the channel. Granted that deck tech is a couple years old and out of date, but it's still pretty accurate. So there are my first three decks in Commander. I experimented a little bit with Terriel in there, but I almost completely forget what I was even trying to do with that deck. So now to the announcement that I wanted to make to thank you all for watching. 
As you may know, Commander Legends, a draft set dedicated to Commander, which includes roughly 70 new legends, is coming out early this November. A goal I set for the channel is to reach a thousand subscribers, so we're less than 400 away now. With Commander Legends is the release of two new precons, so I propose to you if we reach a thousand subscribers by the new year, if we finish off this awful year with us achieving this goal, I will give away one of those precons. Now, we're already on pace to hit that mark by Christmas, so I'm fully committed to giving away one of them, but let me sweeten the pot. If we hit a thousand subs, by November 6th, the date that the set's coming out, I'll give away both. And who knows, if we look like we'll do it before then, I'll add some more stretch goals. I'll have more details as we get closer, but make sure you tell your friends in the playgroup, because there's a decent chance of winning. It's not like one of those bigger channels with hundreds of thousands of subs. You are 1 in 600, and hopefully eventually 1 in 1,000. So there it is, my first commander decks and how I got into magic. Let me know what your first commander was. If you like this video, leave it a like and possibly subscribe. We are a smaller channel, so a little bit of support goes a long way. Thanks for watching, and remember to bolt your words.